Bobby Lashley is one of those guys who just dominates everywhere he goes. He dominated during his first WWE run, he dominated while in TNA, he dominated in Strikeforce and Bellator, and now, upon his return to Vince McMahon's company, he's dominating all over again. Whether it's pro wrestling or MMA, it doesn't matter. If you're standing across the ring from the Almighty, you're most likely going to get hurt because he's one of the most legit tough guys in the industry today. But how has he managed to achieve all of this? Well, join us today as we take a deep dive into his entire career journey so far in Dominator, The Bobby Lashley Story. Franklin Roberto Lashley was born on July 16, 1976 in Junction City, Kansas. His father was a U.S. Army drill sergeant, and so this meant a lot of moving around for the youngster and his three sisters during their childhood. Of course, this made it difficult for Franklin to lay any roots down, but he was able to find an early passion in athletics, particularly amateur wrestling, while in seventh grade. And even after graduating high school, he continued to wrestle, segueing this into a burgeoning career where he became the NAIA National Wrestling Champion for three years in a row between 1996 and 1998 while he was studying at college. In fact, the only thing that stopped him winning this for a fourth year was the fact that he had graduated and subsequently decided to follow his father's footsteps by joining the Army. Not that this stopped him wrestling altogether though, because while serving, he managed to compete in the military's world-class athlete program, winning both gold and silver medals in the International Military Sports Council's Senior Freestyle Wrestling event. At one point, it even looked like he might try out for the 2004 US Olympics team, but this was halted when Bobby injured his knee diving for cover to avoid gunfire during a bank robbery he was witness to, effectively ending his amateur dreams in their tracks. Nevertheless, the future WWE Champion was just too much of a physical specimen to let things end there, so when the doors of the amateur world closed, he simply kicked open the doors to the pros instead. By mid-2005, he had fallen under the radar of WWE and, seeing his potential, they signed him up to a deal almost immediately. Initially, Lashley would make appearances in dark matches and at live events designed to ease him into this new world of pageantry but it didn't take long before he was moved up to the main roster on September 23rd of that year, where he was initially presented as a three-time National Amateur Wrestling Champion, four-time All-American, two-time Armed Forces Champion, and 2002 Silver Medalist at the Military World Championships. This, combined with his naturally attention-grabbing physique, helped to get the newcomer over with audiences quickly, and in his debut match, he made short work of Simon Dean. From there, going on a tear through the undercard and even getting the big monster spot at that November Survivor Series, showing just how much Vince McMahon saw in his future. After that, going into 2006, Lashley continued to work his way up the card as he feuded with the likes of JBL and Finley, even securing a spot in that year's Money in the Bank ladder match as well as making it all the way to the King of the Ring final. While he was still obviously green in the ring at this point, there was no doubt that all he needed was time as even at this early stage, he didn't look out of place against anyone he was put up against, and this of course sped up his ascent up the ladder. And his next step on the ladder to the top came when he defeated JBL on the May 26, 2006 episode of SmackDown to win the WWE United States Championship for the first time, a total he would go on to hold for the next couple of months before being moved over to the ECW brand, where to the shock of many, he would win their world title in his debut match there at December 3rd's December to Dismember pay-per-view. Now, this may not have been a popular decision with ECW fans at the time, given that Bobby didn't exactly fit the bill of what they expected from a champion of the once outlaw promotion. That said, though, in Vince McMahon's eyes, ECW was by then little more than a developmental brand for Raw and SmackDown, similar to what modern-day NXT is so giving Bobby their world title was effectively the boss's way of telling him that there was more high-profile greatness to come. And he didn't have to wait long for this to happen as it turned out. Yes, after spending the early months of 2007 racking up title defenses on ECW, Bobby Lashley was selected as the in-ring representative of Donald Trump during the Battle of the Billionaires storyline between him and Vince McMahon leading into WrestleMania 23. This was a massive career moment for Lashley, as while the match between him and Umaga, the in-ring representative of Vince, wasn't strictly the main event that night, it was certainly presented as such in much of the promotion leading up to the event, and saw a lot of mainstream attention come his way as a result. 
Of course, as the babyface, the Kansas native ended up winning the bout that night, and as per the pre-match stipulation, he and Trump would then go on to shave the head of McMahon in the ring, giving news sources a nice image to put out the next day when promoting WrestleMania. Following this, Bobby entered into an in-ring feud with Vince himself as the boss, now out for revenge, booked him, his son Shane, and Umaga into a three-on-one match against the ECW champion for the title at the next month's Backlash pay-per-view. And as it turned out, even someone with the might of the Almighty would be unable to overcome these odds, and he was eventually pinned by Vince himself that night, making McMahon the ECW champion in a move that angered hardcore fans even more than when he'd won the WWE title years prior. They didn't stay angry for long, though, because he would soon get his just desserts, and by June 3rd's One Night Stand pay-per-view, Lashley would get his hands on him once more, this time in a singles match where he thoroughly beat his employer to regain the gold. Of course, working a program with the boss was just another sign that the company were grooming him for huge things, with some even speculating that there were plans to have him eventually take over John Cena's role as face of the company. And fuel was only further added to this fire when on June 11, 2007, the ECW champion was drafted over to Raw where, after being stripped of his belt, he would quickly go on to become the number one contender to Cena's WWE title. That showdown eventually came at July 22nd's Great American Bash pay-per-view, and though Lashley would not win the belt that night, he would put on a star-making effort that made it seem like it was only a matter of time before he would reach the top of the mountain. How surprised most people were then when, after suffering a shoulder injury that had put him out of action for six months, Bobby was released from his contract on February 4th, 2008. The reasons behind this release have never been fully revealed, and given how much stock the company had put in their new project by this point, it seemed like a very strange decision for them to make. The most common rumors have suggested that the release of his real-life girlfriend Crystal Marshall had caused strife between Lashley and the WWE, leading to his exit. However, this will remain speculation until one of the parties involved says otherwise. Whatever the reason was, the former ECW champion was now no longer employed by WWE. Luckily for him though, he had long harbored ambitions of entering the world of MMA, and this gave him the perfect opportunity to do so. His debut fight would come soon after then, on December 13, 2008 in fact, where he took on Joshua Franklin at the Mixed Fighting Alliance's There Will Be Blood event winning the match by TKO in just 41 seconds. And from there, he continued to impress in the world of MMA, racking up four overall wins by June of 2009. Of course, that wasn't to say he was done with pro wrestling entirely. No, he continued to work on the independent circuit for a while before signing with TNA on July 15th of that same year, initially being introduced as the newest member of the main event Mafia stable before turning on them and establishing himself as a babyface. Following that, he teamed with Mick Foley to take on Kurt Angle and Kevin Nash in a winning effort, and then announced his real reason for coming to the company in the first place to become a simultaneous champion in both pro wrestling and MMA. The road to this goal would see him go on an undefeated streak for his first few months in TNA, defeating the likes of Rhino and Samoa Joe in the process. By November 26, 2009, he had won the TNA Championship Series tournament, earning himself a future shot at the gold, but before that could come, he turned heel and began demanding his release from the company on screen. And as it turned out, this was more than just a storyline. No, for as much as his on-screen character had been determined to reach the top of the mountain in two sports at the same time, the real-life Bobby Lashley was finding it incredibly difficult to devote enough time to each, and so he decided that he wanted to leave the world of wrestling for the time being in order to focus more on MMA. And by February of 2010, his release from TNA was granted. Soon after that, he began fighting for Strike Force as he continued on with his winning ways. By 2011, he was even working for other MMA promotions, such as Titan Fighting Championship and Shark Fights. However, after a bout of mono led him to suffering his first loss to Chad Griggs, his confidence was shaken badly, and he was left unable to train for four months while he recovered. He would recover, though beating John Ott on March 25, 2011 in his return bout to once again reassert himself as a force to be reckoned with. Following that, he even decided to dip his toe back into the world of pro wrestling too, as he made a few appearances for Antonio Inoki's Inoki Genome Federation over in Japan. Back in mixed martial arts though, he had built up a nice 10-2 win-loss record for himself come the end of 2013, 
and was even recognized as the last ever Shark Fights heavyweight champion. This all led to Bellator, the main competitors to the mighty UFC, courting him in 2014 with the promise of a big money contract. And of course, Lashley was only too happy to accept this, officially signing with the promotion in July of that year and winning his first two fights before the autumn was over. But that wasn't all he was doing in 2014, because a few months prior to this, he had surprised many when he returned to wrestling full-time, rejoined the TNA roster, and quickly earned himself a world title shot against Eric Young, which he would subsequently go on to win on the June 19th episode of Impact to finally realize his potential as a champion. Following that, he would continue to work double duty in both wrestling and MMA, defending his TNA world title against the likes of Jeff Hardy, Austin Aries, and Bobby Roode, while also fighting for Bellator, where he continued to rack up victories. Yes, it seemed like he finally found a balance that allowed him to live out both dreams simultaneously, and this continued into 2015 and 2016, as he dominated both promotions. By October 21st of 2016, he had even submitted Josh Pelt at Bellator 162 to raise his record to 15-2, while meanwhile on TNA, he had sent Kurt Angle packing from the company after beating him in what was effectively a Loser Leaves Town match. Soon after that, and he would re-enter the world title picture again, eventually winning the belt for a third time after beating Drew Galloway at the June 12, 2016 Slammiversary pay-per-view. From here, he would go for the remainder of the year and into the beginning of the next, defending the title against performers like Eddie Edwards, James Storm, and Josh Barnett, fully cementing himself by then as the real deal and TNA's equivalent of Brock Lesnar, an unstoppable force who fans knew could take anyone down in both work and shoot matches. There was even some speculation at this point that he might return to WWE, with many fans salivating at the prospects of seeing him finally take on the Beast. That big return would have to wait for the time being, however, because he still had plenty of business to attend to with Impact, and that business would take the form of Alberto El Patron, who was set to challenge Bobby for the belt on the March 2nd, 2017 episode of Impact. And it would be this match where Lashley would temporarily lose the title, briefly ending his fourth run with the gold before it was eventually returned to him following the controversial nature of the bout's finish. Still, he couldn't hold on to the belt forever, and when he did end up losing it decisively later that year, he followed this up by announcing that his time with wrestling was once again over and that he was quitting to go refocus on the world of MMA once more. Of course, this time his wrestling retirement was nothing more than a storyline playing up the similar decision he had made years earlier, and despite his words, he continued to appear on Impact TV throughout the end of 2017 and into the beginning of 2018 as he feuded with the likes of Moose and Brian Cage. But one thing was becoming clearer and clearer as time went on. TNA was far too small of a pond to hold a shark like Lashley any longer. With that in mind then, it should have come as no surprise when the night after WrestleMania 34 on the April 9th, 2018 episode of Raw, he made his surprise return to WWE, attacking Elias and establishing himself as a babyface. Longtime fans were of course overjoyed with this development as it seemed like he would finally now get the chance to show how good he could be and just how much he had grown as a performer during his time away from the company. And the early months of his return would see him team with a number of prominent faces on the roster like Finn Balor and Roman Reigns, all in an effort to quickly re-establish him with fans. At that May's Backlash pay-per-view, he would even team with Braun Strowman to take on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, this springboarding him into a singles feud with Zayn afterwards. Unfortunately though, the subsequent program with the former El Generico didn't quite live up to expectations and ended up being marred by some pretty bad in-ring segments involving the Bellator star's supposed sisters. This was a concerning sign for fans who were sure that, given his history with the company and his now added legitimacy, he should have been a can't miss. Of course, Lashley would go on to win the feud with Zayn, but the worry still lingered afterwards as audiences kept a careful eye on his progress. He did his best to try and overcome this when he was programmed with Roman Reigns next, both men believing that they were the rightful number one contender to Brock Lesnar's universal title. The initial match between the two at July 15th, 2018's Extreme Rules would even see Bobby come out on the winning end, and this led many to speculate that the dream match they had been waiting for years to see between the Almighty and the Beast might finally be happening. As it turned out though, that was not to be quite yet, because by the end of the feud, Roman would be the one to get the shot at Brock, leaving Bobby to instead turn heel after picking up a new manager in Leo Rush. 
and this unit ended up working wonders in helping him recover as the pint-sized Rush was able to talk trash with the best of them while Lashley got to look like an absolute monster standing next to him. The team-up even led to the big man finding intercontinental title success for the first time in his career in January of 2019 after he was able to beat Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins in a triple threat match with the gold on the line, a reign which also marked the Kansas boys' first title run of any kind in WWE since June of 2007, almost 12 years prior. Sadly though, there would still be a few hurdles for him to overcome even after this big win as at the 2019 Royal Rumble, he would be eliminated after just 13 seconds, and then at the following month's Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, he would lose his Intercontinental title to Finn Balor, ending the run at just 34 days. He was able to briefly regain the gold after this, but by WrestleMania 35, all of that would be worthless, as he would lose it for the second time that year, lending a crucial blow to his credibility. After this, things would get even worse as he got into a feud with Braun Strowman that summer, a feud which would see Bobby lose at almost every turn. And from there, he started an on-screen affair with Lana, the wife of Rusev, which was supposed to be a major angle to get him over, but ended up being enjoyed by pretty much no one except for Vince McMahon himself. Unfortunately, this feud dragged on all the way into 2020 and only ended when Rusev already had one foot out the door of the company. The poor reception of this being seen is just another blow to Lashley's stock and further evidence that he had been mismanaged since his return. Thankfully though, the company would soon figure out how to utilize him properly and to the surprise of no one, it involved presenting him as a no-nonsense badass. Yes, after a loss to Aleister Black at WrestleMania 36, Lashley began going on something of a winning streak powering his way through opponents every week until the May 11th episode of Raw, where he announced that he had formally aligned himself with the recently returned MVP. This union would see him get a title match with Drew McIntyre at June 14th, 2020's Backlash pay-per-view, and would go on to be one of the MMA star's best bouts in the company since his return, completely reinvigorating him in the eyes of fans, even if he didn't manage to get the win by the end of the night. Following this, Bobby, with MVP by his side as a mouthpiece and a confidant, continued to wage war on the Raw roster, and the duo would soon add Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander to the ranks, formally labeling themselves as the Hurt Business from then on in. And as an unstoppable force on the Red brand, the Hurt Business would take whatever they wanted whenever they wanted, absolutely destroying the likes of Ricochet and Apollo Crews in feuds over the course of that summer. Lashley would even beat Cruz at the August 30th Payback pay-per-view to win the United States Championship, and from there, would successfully defend the gold in the months that followed. When Raw Underground was briefly a thing last year, it was the Hurt Business who made the biggest statement on it, and when WWE was invaded by Retribution not long after, it would be the Hurt Business who would stand directly across from them, representing the entire Raw locker room as they beat them down week after week. Yes, by now, the real deal had been firmly established as one of the biggest threats on the main roster once again, and so fans couldn't wait to see him potentially get pushed back up into the world title picture. And as things would happen, they wouldn't have to wait much longer for this, because after dropping the US belt to Matt Riddle at February 21st, 2021's Elimination Chamber, Bobby and the rest of the Hurt Business would make a deal with The Miz to help him cash in his Money in the Bank contract on WWE Champion Drew McIntyre an attempt that would be successful and would see The Miz hold the gold for the second time in his career by the end of that show. The following night on Raw and The Hurt Business would confront the new champion, letting the world in on their arrangement and demanding that Lashley get the title shot he had been promised as part of the deal. Now, of course, with The Miz being the Weasley champion that he is, he initially refused this and tried everything he could to back out of the match, but it didn't matter in the end because on the March 1st episode of Raw, he was finally forced to put the gold on the line, and it only ended up taking Lashley a matter of minutes from there before he had tapped out the now former champion, and was for the first time in his career holding the WWE Heavyweight title above his head as the rightful top dog. It was a moment that his fans have been waiting to see for years, and was vindication that even after those early road bumps upon his return to the company, he still had what it took to overcome this and reach the top of the mountain. And as of the time of this video's recording, he remains the champ over on Raw, with it looking likely that he'll end up defending the belt against Drew McIntyre at the upcoming WrestleMania 37, the first WWE show that'll be allowing fans in attendance for over a year. 
Whether he wins or loses that eventual match, he's by now already proven himself to be a firm main event presence in the company once again, finally realizing the potential he always knew he had. But will his future only include wrestling? Or does he still have ambitions of becoming a champion in the world of MMA as well? As of right now, his contract with Bellator has expired, but this doesn't necessarily mean that he won't show up elsewhere at some point. And who knows, maybe by the end of this run, he'll be able to do what not even Brock Lesnar was able to do and become a simultaneous world champion in both pro wrestling and MMA. Well guys, what did you think of the video? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, as well as follow Wrestle with Andy on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.